Hi, and welcome back to the fifth section of this course about recurrent neural networks. This section will be divided in four different videos. In the first one, we will understand the basic concepts of recurrent neural networks, one of the most successful and used deep learning algorithms so far. Then, in the second video, we will introduce the long short-term memories, also known as LSTMs, as the natural extension of recurrent neural networks for dealing with the long-term dependencies problem. In the third video, we will learn how to actually implement and use a recurrent neural network in R using the RNN package. And finally, in the last video, we will see as a real use case how to build a char level model for the English language from scratch. So let's move to the first video of this section, Introduction to Recurrent Neural Networks. In this video, we will firstly point out the key features of recurrent neural networks and how they differ from previously introduced deep learning algorithms like fully connected artificial neural networks or CNNs. Then we will introduce a broad architectural overview of such artificial neural networks, underlining their flexibility despite their simplicity. In the end, we will see how to adapt the standard backpropagation algorithm to artificial neural networks with backward connections and for what tasks uh, recurrent neural networks are useful and currently used. So, as we have seen in the previous sections, Fully connected artificial neural networks and CNNs receive an input, a single vector, transform it through a series of hidden layers and produce an output. However, humans don't start their thinking from scratch every moment. As we listen to a story or read a book, we understand events based on what has happened before. We don't throw everything away and start thinking from scratch again our thoughts have persistence. These are just some examples of tasks where data are strongly dependent and correlated by means of cause-effect. Recurrent neural networks address exactly this issue. They are networks with loops in them, allowing information to persist. So let's say that H is a chunk of neural network which looks at some input XT and outputs a value yt. xt and yt here could be both real values or vectors. The loop allows information to be passed from one time step to the next, where the xt has changed and we want to produce a new yt based also on the previous x values. These loops make recurrent neural networks seem kind of mysterious. However, if you think a bit more about it, it turns out that they aren't all that different from a normal neural network. Indeed, a recurrent neural network can be thought as multiple copies of the same network, each passing a message to its successor. So, for example, if we are dealing with a sequence long k time steps, we can unroll the recurrent neural network such that we have multiple copies of the same network repeated k times. And if you look at it, this is just a simple feedforward neural network. So the key ability of a recurrent neural network is letting the information to persist while the input patterns change. And since we assume that the patterns are sequentially dependent somehow, this is exactly what we want. So recurrent neural networks are great for modeling what is called short-term memory in neuroscience, that is the capacity of holding a small amount of information in mind in an active, readily available state for a short period of time, which is in contrast with long-term memory through which we store and retrieve information after a long period of time. Another interesting feature of these networks is that despite their simplicity, they are incredibly flexible and powerful. And since we are dealing with sequences, sometimes if we want just to predict the next value in a sequence, we don't need further labeling of the data. So 
all of these means we are now able to easily model sequence learning or time related problems using deep learning techniques and what we have learned so far about artificial neural networks. So as you can see in this image, the architecture of a recurrent neural network can be pretty flexible and not necessarily composed of exactly the same submodule repeated key times. In the one-to-one -one case, we are simply dealing with a classical MLP architecture where we have an input vector, an hidden and output vector. Then, for example, we have the one-to-many architecture where we have just a single input vector and then a series of hidden and output vectors. Keep in mind that this is not like a classical multi-hidden layer artificial neural networks. First of all, because we have many output vectors, each connected to a different hidden layer. And secondly, the weights connecting each of the hidden to hidden vectors and the hidden to output vectors are shared. In the same way, we can have a many-to-one or a many-to-many -many architecture, which is for sure the most common architecture. So let us focus on the many-to-many -many architecture. The RNN has some internal state, which has to be updated every time step. In the simplest case, we can instantiate the hidden state uppercase H with a single hidden vector H, as we have seen in the figure of the previous slide. And the whole network, considering the input and the output as vectors, is as simple as these two formulas. We can compute the hidden vector at time t as the application of the tan h activation function to the sum of the product between the previous hidden layer activations to the weights matrix WHH and the product between the current input pattern XT and the weights matrix uh, WXH connecting the input to the hidden layer. Then we can compute the output at time t as the product between the weights matrix uh, WHY and the current hidden vector. Easy, isn't it? So now, how can we learn the weights of a recurrent neural network if we have backwards connections? We can use the backpropagation through time algorithm, which is the natural extension of the backpropagation algorithm we have seen in the third section of this course for training feedforward neural networks. So let's have a look at the pseudo code of the backpropagation through time algorithm. First of all, we need the sequence of patterns, X, and the respective sequence of outputs, Y. Then we can unfold the RNN containing K instances of the score function F, which is the submodule repeated K times. Note that K is not necessarily the entire length of the sequence, uh, and this is just another hyperparameter to tune. Then we initialize the first hidden state with random values, and start learning until we met some criteria. Then from t ranging from 0 to n minus k, we perform a series of steps. We set the network inputs, h, xt, xt plus 1, and so on and so forth, until the next input pattern, xt plus k minus 1. Then we forward propagate the inputs over the whole unfolded network and backpropagate the error. We update the different weights and then to get back to the raw version of the RNN, we average the weights uh, in each instance of F together such that each F is identical. And in the end, we update H such that for the next uh, K steps, we start with a good hidden state H. So RNNs can be used and are currently used as state-of-the-art algorithms for many, many sequence learning problems. For example, we can use our current neural network to learn a character level language model so that given a series of characters, we can predict the next based on their statistical occurrences. So our architecture for each time step will take a new input and produce a prediction for the next character. Input and output are both vectors, 
where each character is encoded in a one-hot representation. The one-hot representation consists in a vector of the size of the vocabulary, in this case the four different characters, where all the values are zero with exception to one single value set to one and corresponding to the actual character in the vocabulary. So for example, after having seen H, E, L, L, the network is pretty confident the next character will be O. Turns out that after a few training iterations, the model, given a random starting character and a hidden state, can produce the following character sequence. That is pretty impossible to decipher. But after a few hours, it can produce something like this. Why do what that day? replied Natasha, and wishing to himself the fact that Princess, Princess Mary, was easier, fed in ad often and in. Which does not make sense, but it's almost grammatically correct and follows a common structure of sentences in a dialogue. Amazing, right? But we can use RNNs for many other sequence learning problems. For example, RNNs have been used successfully for language translation, image captioning, speech recognition, stock price prediction, and many, many others.